It's Tony here from We Try Anything. The channel likes to try things so you don't have to. There it is, there's my finger. Right, what we're gonna have a look at, quick look at today is the Ford Fiesta 1.6 e-kinetic diesel five door. Basically, as you can see, um, this was released or this was brought out in late 2008. Um, and it was the, you know, it's a considerable upgrade to what was the car before it, which was a bit more of a boxier design, this car. Um, it's, it uses what was at the time Ford's new design language, which was to make the car look like it's moving even though it isn't. So as you can see with the, you know, it's got the very strong lines running down the actual side of the car. Um, it's also got, you know, the headlights really do kind of emphasize that sort of look to the vehicle. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is a very kind of sporty car and yet you can see why it's been popular really with a lot of people um, since its release. Um, I mean, this variant of the car doesn't have alloys or anything. Those are just your kind of, you know, your, your trims, as it were. Um, but as you can see here, I mean, it's, it's, it is a very nice, well-designed uh, vehicle, really, uh, that can accommodate, uh, well, what we would say at a push five people. Um, what I'm going to do is have a, uh, open the boot and have a look. So just show you the space in there. Right then, on opening the boots, as you can see, it's got it's quite spacious. Um, sorry about the dirt and stuff. We haven't really kind of <laughs> cleaned it. Um, well, you know, I don't think many people do actually vacuum their boots, really. But um, it is quite spacious here, so you can see you can fit quite a bit in. And the back doors here, <coughs> sorry, the back uh, seats can go down. You just push and you go forward. Um, and it is quite spacious. And we have, you know, we have fit quite a bit of luggage in here to, you know, go away on holiday and stuff. And enough for five people to go away for a week. And it's, it's accommodated it very well. Um, um, moving on the inside of the vehicle, let me just the boot down the actual interior of the car uh, it is spacious in the back um, you know this is this is the car set this the, the seat set backwards and I am five foot um, five foot five five foot six so there's there's a fair amount of room for me I mean I would imagine a six foot person would have to have that seat forward a little bit but this is this is a passenger seat so at the end of the day it's not too bad um, we've got just a car seats here but you know the headroom wise if I can just turn it around and show you the headroom, if that's got my head. Um, headroom wise, I'm, I'm, again, I'm okay. You know, I'm only five foot five, but it, it, does, it does the job very well. Right then, just getting into the passenger seat. And as I, can, as I said earlier, it is quite, it is quite spacious in here. I'm, I'll move it forward a little. And you, you know, you do get quite a bit of leg room in this car. Um, and there's the driver's console here, which has this kind of mobile phone, um, look to it i mean obviously with the newer newer mark fiestas it has got like a screen now and this is kind of minimized but it, it is quite angular it's quite you know it's quite sporty looking i mean in the top of the range ones this is like a piano black but this has been you know this is a silver effect kind of finish and you know it's been easy to clean it hasn't been dirty it doesn't keep fingerprints or anything um you've got air vents situated here 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 and obviously over there and you know it, it does it does do very well keeping you cool as well, especially when you get the actual aircon on. Now this model, as I say, you know, you got your aircon there. This model actually comes with the parking sensors front and back, which have been brilliant really for what you needed for um, making sure that you don't hit anything or you can park close to things without kind of worrying that you're going to damage your car. I mean, you've got the console here that when you turn it on, it has got the icons running down the side to say whether it's... Um, you know what what's going on so for example i'm obviously on the radio if i go on cd it'll highlight the cd and stuff like that so you got a quick glance i mean obviously it's not like your infotainment modern infotainment systems nowadays but you can kind of see at a glance what you're doing or what's going on at the minute um speaking of that you actually do have a phone option in this because obviously it's got the bluetooth hands-free built into the car and um, which has been you know it's been great for my my wife who's been using this car daily and um, which which is controlled via these buttons here 
and you know it's it's been fantastic and it's held calls it's taken calls you've made calls it's it's just done it really well so again you know it's it's been it's been good in that aspect really while i'm at it i'm going to just quickly show you the glove box see here you got enough for like a fairly decent sized bottle here um you know you got a fair amount it is plasticky so you do hear things rattling around um whether that's whether you want to put a bit of cloth in there just to stop stuff like that but he's never really concerned us really i mean again you've got you know you've got it there as well and you've got two cups cup holders there you got a cup hold you've got a cup holder there as well see so, you know you're quite well catered for and in the back uh, you don't you don't seem to have much storage in the back um i'm just trying to look see what you've got going on there and there's not there's not much going on there really in terms of what where you can store stuff so really your front's the only um place to put stuff and obviously you've got your keep fit windows there which are wind up and down up front again you've got your uh window wing mirror adjustment there which is electrically powered a uh, electric windows uh you can control the passenger side as well as the driver's side and that's it really i mean moving on to the steering wheel it does come this car did come with uh obviously the uh, volume control and memory and uh track maneuvering and stuff like that really um obviously you've got your horn here and on more titanium models you do get cruise control which kind of sits there really which which is you know which would be ideal if you're doing a lot of miles in this car which the 1.6 diesel is ideal for because it does give you a bit of power but in terms of this spec i mean it is the e-kinetic spec which comes with the the benefit of free tax which is always a bonus um here you've got what's known as uh it's ford's kind of uh, command system which you speak now we've never really bothered with it really because we've always found that when you use it it's very hit and miss and it's a gimmick at first i mean uh, when this car came out i'd imagine you know it's all about voice commands and it was nowhere near as advanced as the likes of alexa which is now appearing in cars of not so much of this nature but of a bit more luxury um but you know it's 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 there but this is what controls the indicators you know left and right and you know yeah you've as it were your high beam and stuff and uh, obviously that's what changes the uh, computer over there's your wipers which you can adjust the actual timing of so you know when you've got it on the intermittent wipe you can how quick you want it or how slow you want it you know that's it i mean obviously the rear wash and stuff like that um the weird the weird thing is normally i'm used to on a car you have to pull that to get the front ones but that does the back when you pull it what you do is you've got to press that button to get the actual front wipe uh, sorry the front windscreen to wash itself so a bit of a strange one there especially when you change cars a bit often so you, you do get used to it but you know I'm going to quickly jump into the front seat and just say uh, go through some of the things on there and then uh, we'll take it for a drive right then in the front seat uh, in the driver's seat as well, this is what you're greeted with um, you're greeted with the um, I mean as you can see this is only done 80,000 five, nearly 500 now which is minimal for a diesel engine it's you know you're just kind of breaking it in really you've got your rev counter your speedo and you've got your fuel gauge there and obviously that's just saying it's uh, been immobilized there and you do have um you know you can change i'm gonna put the key in so if it, i'm just, obviously it's gonna cut to me after i put the key in but you know you can change the elements there sorry uh, let this uh, thing focus you can change the elements there uh, which will give you other kind of information such as mileage how many miles to uh what you got left and what have you but what i'll just do is pop the key and then you can have a quick look right then key in and i'm just gonna fire it up so as you can see all the dials are nicely lit up which should go out after a while and then the you know this isn't reading any kind of oil issues it's just what they show i mean obviously i'm doing it on a cold day so as you can see here it is uh it is uh, showing that uh, symbol there to, to mean it's frosty. When it's red, it's really frosty, so that's that's the reason. But if I fire it up, um, this is showing me at the top there that it's only got 133 miles left, which is on well, kind of a half a tank really. So it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't mean it does very very well mileage. But this is only, you know, this is me driving door to door really. It's not me kind of on the motorway and stuff because the range does go up. Um, you know, obviously it becomes more efficient the, the quicker. You, drive it up um, as I say you just go through all sorts you know 47 miles to the gallon uh, at the minute I mean obviously I think that's uh, an average kind of range that it's doing but it does do better than that when you are on the motorway um, 23 miles per hour, uh, miles per hour average and as I say it's the 80,500 really um, but just you know you got your lights here and stuff like that which is great um, it is quite quiet when it's on idle, you know, there's been no problem there, you know, 
But what I will say is when I take it on the road, it is quite a loudish car really, and I've always noticed that with Fiestas, uh, especially the older one that we had. We had the uh, the two marks before it, so it would be the Mark V, I think, which is a bit more of a boxy one, and that was quite loud on the motorway, but you know, it just it wasn't that well insulated. But this this isn't as loud, but it can get loud. So, but well, what I'll do is, um, you know, I've just quickly just quick pan across, and you can just see what's going on here with the handbrake. You've got your USB connector there, and aux in, as well as a 12 volt um socket there as well but what i'll do is i'll get the other camera set up and then uh, we'll just take it on the road for a test drive right then we're going to head off on our way and we're going to do a little road test of the ford fiesta that we've just been talking about um we've had to do it on a separate day because um we did it yesterday the actual road test as well but the actual footage was corrupt so we're going to do it again so here we go um the Ford Fiesta, driving the Ford Fiesta, it is a it is a good car to drive, don't get me wrong, it's agile. Um, with the 1.6, it's nippy. It gets moving when it wants to. Um, obviously, once it's warmed up, because it's a diesel engine. Um, and it's very agile, so if I turn the steering wheel, it's got great feedback. Um, and you can feel what's going on in the road. It's not like any kind of vagueness or anything like that. It is a, it is a good car. And I can understand why it's class leading, really, because a lot of the times when you see these reviews of um, like the super minis and stuff like that, the small car class, they all go on about how, you know, they all say, well, it's not as good as the Ford Fiesta. Um, I mean, obviously, the Polo ranks higher with kind of the interior quality and the feel to it. But in terms of um, overall package of driving and feeling good about the drive, you know, does it feel good to drive and stuff, the Ford Fiesta wins hands down. I mean, I drove other cars, I mean, as I said, like the, the Micra that I've reviewed, and there's a link up there, um, or a link in the description below regarding the Micra, it, it is quite fun to drive, but it's not as, it's not as engaging as the Fiesta. Um, in terms of uh, road manners, I mean, it's quite solid, it, it does feel solid, I mean, obviously, you know, you do have kind of a scratchy, plasticky kind of feel to the, the interior as such. So, I mean, I've had no, you know, rattles or anything like that going on internally. Uh, externally, it's a slightly different matter, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, driving down to the likes of Birmingham or from Newcastle or driving, you know, doing a long distance drive, you, it's not as bad as the micro where you do feel like you do know you um sorry you're gonna have to figure this one it's quite a low winter sun going on here today um you do feel a little bit that you've done a, a long journey but it's nowhere near in the kind of ballpark that um the, the micro does it uh, where you know for a fact that you've driven quite a distance and uh you do feel it in the amount you know how tired you feel directly after it um but in terms of road manners, it is it is a very competent car, really. It's solid. You don't feel like you're going to get blown about. And with the 1.6 diesel engine, so I'm just waiting for a gap in the island. Uh, with the 1.6 diesel engine that's in here, it's got quite a bit of torque to it. Um, without the disadvantages of the 1.4, where you know the 1.4 diesel engine in uh, the, the Fiestas of this ilk. Um, they suffer with a few kind of well-known problems, um, which is kind of a, it's, which is the, um, how can I say, it's the diesel injector issue with the uh, washers where they go weird and you get fumes coming in the car and stuff, uh, which was something I had on a C3, which had the same engine. But it's it's not massively loud. I know I, did, I, pro I may have said um, that the, inside the cabin you do you can hear. You know the engine and stuff so it's not it's not massively loud but it's not well insulated so on a journey you can you know you might find it a bit intrusive um, but you don't suffer with wind noise and stuff that you might do on another car um, you know you're quite shielded from that but in terms of um, how the car sounds and stuff it's, it's not brilliant but it's better than the mark 5 which when I used to sit in the back of the car you, you could, sorry, I was just checking to see if it was recorded. You could not hear what the, the driver was saying, the passenger was saying. It was just, you had to keep turning the radio down and you had to wait till they stopped because th that, those were loud. Um, 
as I say, driving on the uh, we're, we're just driving on a bypass here, so you can get an idea of the uh, what it's like. Um, it, it's great, yeah. It's it's solid. It, it feels composed. Um, as I say, the feedback is good. You know what's happening on the road. Um, that's it, really. I mean, that's all I can say on the Super Mini. I can understand why it's a, it's a firm favourite with uh, the UK uh, drivers in the UK, um, just due to the fact that it is a, it is a popular vehicle, really, and it, it does give you that great driving feel um, that you wouldn't probably benefit from with other small with, with other brands or other marks of car, really. Um, Reliability-wise. Um, it's not been the most reliable. It's always started. It's never had a problem with the engine. I've never had anything break down engine-wise. I've never been stranded or anything. But there have been things that have gone on the car, and whether they wear or tear. I mean, it's gone through a good couple of sets of front tyres. Uh, one was an alignment issue, um, where the alignment on the passenger side was slightly off. So it went through a couple of tyres there, and he went through them quite quick. Um, but the other main reliability things we've had, which is the fan, um, it stopped working in numbers one through to three, and it was only four, and that was, a, I believe it's a resistor or something that's around the back of the actual uh, heating console that caused the issue, where it just died. So that is, it is a, it is a common, common problem with, a, I believe, with Fiestas that that does happen, um, where they. Um, where they break, where they stop working like that. The other thing we've had an issue with is the steering column, where the actual it used to when you used to move off slowly, um, you would have a knock, or then the, the steering wheel would be quite notchy, and then it would knock, and um, that was quite disconcerting really. And what it was, as we found out, it was the actual steering column, which isn't a cheap part because only Ford do them, or the only make them. There's no other kind of third party suppliers that do these sort of things that you can get them a bit cheaper and you're probably looking at about what 150 170 quid to change over um, and that caused no end of problems with that uh, once you got once you got changed I mean it's smooth and you know the steering was lovely and smooth but then we had our next issues which was problems with the suspension um, and I'm trying to think of any other problems well the problem we've got at the minute is where the um, where it rattles now when the car is put under uh, under load really but you're not going fast so at, at speed you can't hear the rattling but when you are doing slow maneuvers like moving off from traffic lights or around an island or going up a hill you know slowly or or just parking really or if you're reversing off a driveway you do hear this kind of rattle that's happening at the front so in terms of reliability it's not been fantastic really you know a lot of people do I mean it might have been a, the car that we've had I don't know but there's been certain issues that have cropped up on this car like for example the steering column problem that are common to Fiestas so you know it, to the point of where um, there was a Ford service bulletin that I'd read on one of the um, forums where you know you have to take it in you pay to get it greased because there's grease on the CV joints dry out because the actual CV joints are apparently under the um, steering, um, what's called it, the steering motor, as it were, or this, you know, the power-assisted steering motor that's underneath the steering is just directly above it, so it dries it out. And apparently, Ford don't use that much grease, or they didn't use the thick enough grease. Well, I'm not sure. I'm no real mechanic, as I've always said, but you know that was an issue. And there is a YouTube video of a bloke talking about that, which you can find if you just search up the problem. But what I would say is, if you are looking to buy something like this, like a Fiesta, this mark, which is, the, I mean, this is a 2010 um, Fiesta, which is the Mark 7, which was brought out, as I've said, in 2008. Um, it's something worth looking out for, because when, if you turn the steering while you're going slow, or you're doing left or right, when you're kind of manoeuvring about 5, 10 miles an hour, you will hear that knock. If you've got that, then you, you'll eventually end up replacing the steering column. Um, I'm trying to think of any other problems that we've had on uh, on this car. Um, that's it, really. I mean, it's good on it's good on um, petrol. We, we haven't had to. It's good on diesel. Sorry, I mean, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting at the minute. I'm not travelling very far and very fast. Whoa. I'm getting 70, 30, well, 44 miles to the gallon. Not brilliant, but um, it's.
it's okay, but it, it has, like when it's on a motorway journey, it has done really well. I've got 60 miles a gallon, sorry, 60 miles to the gallon, and you know, it's been all right, to be honest. Um, but really, that's all I can surmise with the Fiesta. It is a good car. It's got a little bit of poke about it. It's not brilliant, but it's, it's good. It'll get you out of a situation or, um, you know, if you want to overtake someone, it is ideal for that. Especially when you're on the motorway speed, you know, you've got that nice push from the turbo. But again, it won't set your world on fire. Um, the controls are easy to use. Um, you know, it's easy to navigate what's going on there once you're used to it. Um, window wipers, as I said, you've got to press that to get the um, front one and then you've got to pull it to get the back one, which might, you know, might throw you a little bit. But other than that, yeah, um, I would say to, the Fiesta's a good car, but there is certain issues with it. Oh, there is certain issues with it that might just put you off. So, you know, I mean, by all means, look at a few other reviews, but we've had this for three years now. And other than the last four months, five months, it's not been too bad, it's been quite dependable really. It's never really left us in a situation which, you know, we've been stuck. Um, and it's never not started, it's always started every every time, not a problem. But, as I say, there's been them niggling issues where we've had to do suspension work on it. Brakes have gone about two or three times we've had to replace them. But one of them is just down to the way the garage did it as opposed to the way the Fiesta is. Um, but there is, you do read on these kind of forums that they do suffer with sort of master cylinder problems, which means if you've got like a spongy type brake uh, on the Ford Fiesta, then that might be the reason why. But again, that's only through me reading forums, so I'm, I'm not perfect. But just to recap, just to summarise in total, it is a good car, uh, but you look out for any problems that you might have with it. Um, you know, get it checked by all means, get it checked by the AA or, um, or get a warranty on it if you are looking to buy a Fiesta. Um, it's never let us down. It's a good car, it's great to drive, better than well, I've driven any other kind of small Polo or anything of that class. It is, it is a fun car to drive, don't get me wrong, it does put a, like a smile on your face. And with the 1.6, it's got a nice bit of power. Plus, just to add, because it's the e-kinetic one, it benefits from zero tax. And it's quite good on insurance as well. Um, my wife has, what, 10 years no claims? And it just obviously is postcode dependent. But um, with 10 years no claims, she pays about 240. So it's not bad. I mean, some people might get it cheaper. Some people might have to pay more. But in terms of what you're what you're getting for what you're paying it's good and as I said it, the zero tax is just brilliant and it's because it only kicks out 99 grams of uh, carbon monoxide so I hope you like the review um, if you want to know any more about the Fiesta because as I said we've had it for three years so by all means I can answer any questions that you may have um, you know please pop them down in the uh, in the comment section below um, we hope you like the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, the usual, you know, the usual malarkey, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.